much about today. I can't see Neziswa. Yeah. Hi. At the right at the back there. Uh, both of us uh, are hosting this colloquium today. I'm going to do an introduction and I introduce the president of the South African Medical Research Council, Professor Glenda Gray, and then introduce the first speaker, the MEC of Health in the Western uh, Province, Western Cape Province, Professor Noma French Mbombo, who will get us started on session one proper. <coughs> so, good morning, thank you for coming. This has been quite overwhelming. We had anticipated half the number of people will be here today, but uh, uh, different measures, cajoling, persuading, threatening, we have you here, and you're welcome, and glad to have you here. Recently, numerous conversations about Africa, Africans, and blackness have been taking place in informal, political, and academic spaces. These conversations and debates are becoming louder, insistent, antagonistic sometimes, principally students uh, at different universities at the forefront of demands for the decolonization of knowledge and or Africanization of education, practice, and university spaces. At the same time, we've had, fortunately, politicians and some fellow citizens contending that colonialism had positive contributions such as the independent judiciary, transport infrastructure and piped water. We might not want to waste our time with uh, such sentiments unless we feel strongly to do so today. As a result, from the turnout this morning, as I just indicated to you, it seems that we need far many more dialogues about colonialism and coloniality, decolonization and decoloniality, about Africa, Africans, and race. In this space this morning, I want to be clear that we as organizers uh, have some thoughts about Africa and Africans. Um, and we had in mind two notions about these two concepts. First, of course, is our continent and the people who live in it, irrespective of their race and ethnicity. I always get, uh, well, the first time I heard about how Kenyans, for instance, Nigerians, Cameroonians, and some of my friends around the world that says South Africans are obsessed about race, and only later I started to understand what they mean by that. Yes, South Africans are highly racialized country, as opposed to other parts of, of our continent who might be more interested in ethnicity. Second, then, by Africa and Africans, we mean black people, as social psychologists use this term, prototypical Africans. The implications of these two notions are, first, that when, we, when one is doing work in, in Africa, uh, on, about, with Africans, be it research, studying, teaching, or policy making, and other forms of practice, one is doing African work. The major difference is how one situates oneself and approaches Africa and Africans. And second, questions about what it means to be African and who is African, about Africa and who is African will always haunt health and social research on this continent. Because of the enduring raptures caused by European colonialism, contemporary racism, and the global economy of knowledge, which puts Africa at a disadvantage. Notwithstanding what we think, what me and Nezi Iswa and some of my colleagues think about Africa and Africans, we should emphasize that as organizers, we're open and we hope to hear differences about how people think of Africa and Africans. And more crucially, how people have centered or might reconsider how to center Africa after this uh, in health and social science research and research grants, in curricula, in teaching and learning as well as in health and social spaces, social policies as well. There will likely be differences, probably some very heated debates, 
which I hope some of us can help contain. There will be frustration, there will be anger, uh, we suspect. Uh, However, if research means uh, a constant search, constant searching, and universities and research councils such as the MRC are created to seek and develop this imperative to search for knowledge. We have to nurture these spaces, a space like this, spaces as university, at universities, as spaces of investigation, of dialogue, and civil exchange. It is because many of us, as students, as researchers, as research managers, in university, in universities and research councils, as politicians, as practitioners, want the radical change of institutions that we precisely do not want to destroy them. That's an important point right here that's addressed to, of course, uh, uh, what's, what happened in 2015, 2016, and, and uh, I suspect will keep on happening in the future. That at the very moment that one is angry and is confronting managers or uh, supervisors or teachers, one doesn't want to destroy but to, to create something new. Today's colloquium, which Glenda will speak about a little bit more uh, on Centering Africa in Health and Social Science Research and Teaching, is intended to address four things. Here they are. How Africans in Africa are served by health and social research. Underserved, well served, not so well served. Whose agenda on the whole dominates health and social research in Africa? Are these funders, students, uh, mentors, teachers, universities as a whole? Three, whose problems, epistemologies, cultural values, social imaginaries, methods, and theories are centered in university health and social science teaching, learning in, Af in Africa. And this is quite important, I guess, for a number of people, including me, about how do you think Africa in your research and work? And fourth, how are students and the continent advantaged or disadvantaged by the way African Africans are situated in the curriculum? I'm talking particularly in the discipline I was uh, brought up in that literally Africa is not present in psychology. These four overarching questions, I hope, will be answered by the different sessions and consequent discussions of the day's programs. We hope today, discussions, today's discussions will help us to better reflect and determine, determine whether the research we do and the learning provided in Ohio uh, education institutions incapacitates or builds African Africans, and once again, keep these two notions that I started with about African Africans in mind. We hope today's discussions will help us, all of us, some of us perhaps, to better reflect and determine whether the courses taught at universities optimally address the needs and struggles of Africans in Africa. And we hope today's discussions will help us to better reflect why we continue to produce so few black PhDs more than 20 years into our freedom. I take this directly from the Minister of Higher Education uh, and Training. In considering the issue of centering health in African social science research and teaching, it is inevitable to examine the fact that knowledge production and knowledge management in our country is dominated by Western ideas and white male and to a lesser extent white female authors. This places Africa, African ideas generally, because I spoke about the worst Euro-American uh, centeredness of our knowledge. This places Africa generally, and black male and female researchers and teachers in particular, because I spoke about white and whiteness in particular, in an inferior position, or at least a marginalized position. There are several ways to respond to being in such an alienating position in Africa. Among the many ways many of us in Africa, and especially if black have responded, is unfortunately by adopting and reproducing for our own individual upward social mobility and simply self-preservation. Uh, a contextual and alienating Western, alienating Western and white masculine ideas. It's really sad, it's a very sad situation. But to paraphrase Joe Hill's famous saying, don't waste any time mourning, organize to change the university and research agenda. 
Now, this colloquium was put together and pushed through by the agency and the energy of my student, Nezi Swatiti. That has put me in mind to say something to my young self, reminded my, me to think about what I could have wanted to learn as a student and a young research about African and Africans in psychology. So to address myself to my younger self and perhaps to some students in here, here and perhaps other students who are interested uh, in getting this right. There are many things uh, one might want to do or as a group of students you want, might want to do as a young researchers to send African Africans and your being African and black in the academy. And here are four, five, five. I'm gonna be quick about this, which some of you might have heard me articulate elsewhere. First, build. Build, create stuff. Build and create work beyond the class and discipline and university and research organization in which you study and work. You have to build stuff. Um, institutions are really important, but also networks are important. So create work beyond the class, or creating work beyond the class it comes easily to some disciplines. But I'm, I'm going to always regress to the discipline I was trained in. In psychology, you're not told to build. You, you, you don't, in art, you're told to build something outside of the class. In other disciplines, same thing. In computer science, you build something outside of the class, which is not a health science. Uh, so in microbiology, public health, politics, or psychology, for instance, you're not taught to build. But the work doesn't have to be at a scale of Banksy or Elon Musk. It doesn't have to be directed at getting to represent your country at the Vienna, Venice Biennale. But that's not why you do it. Um, so whether you're in microbiology, in criminology, in politics, in medical anthropology, urban sociology, transport economics, neuropsychology, engineering, whatever, so much just make stuff, just create things, create networks. Um, and Facebook and websites and blogs are quite an important part of this in the, in the new world. So establish this, a division of, of, of student division in your professional association. Develop a public engagement project, found a reading group, whatever it is, create it. Second, and I think I didn't quite realize it when I was a student myself, collaborate. Collaborating, collaboration is essential. It's, it's such an essential thing you can't get around it more and more. But what more can I say? Find people, fellow students, researchers, others beyond your discipline interested in Africa. And there are many people with interesting ideas. So persuade them that you are interesting. And I'm sure we all are interesting. So don't isolate yourself. And do dope stuff like uh, Kanye West says. So collaborate and I'm hoping that you'll do that. Have a point of view. And this is quite an essential thing. So there's two ways to, to, to supervise students. One, you supervise students, you bring, bring them into your project as a supervisor at university. And some disciplines do this much more easily. So it's a large program, which is quite important. But there are other ways to do this. Uh, and if you are going to supervise, so if you find a supervisor, young, me, don't lose a point of view about the stuff that really moves you. And keep it, and nourish it, and hopefully you find somebody to help you with that. Four, get used to rejection. Get used to rejection, and it's a big, big thing. It's not always personal, it's part of the system. It's not failure if you're still in it, uh, only if you give up. And last, find a good mentor. Some of us are lucky to find these mentors. So those are the five things I hope in trying to understand that Africa is not just Mtanzani or Alexander or Soweto or Cape Town or Mitchell's Plain, that mentors are all over. I should like to mention that this is the first colloquium in a series that seeks to center African Africans, that the Transdisciplinary African Psychologist Program and the Violence, Injury and Peace Research Unit will be organizing this year. The second colloquium which will likely focus on sexuality and violence, or sexual violence, in Africa and on Africans. It's tentatively scheduled for July 31st. Um, much more certain we'll be taking the third event to Durban, hitching on the first Pan-African Psychology Union Conference. That event will come under the title Conceiving Africa in Psychology and will be held in, held in September. 
I wish to extend our gratitude to all of the speakers. Thomas Nindera, Zolek Anete, Nadine, Wanga, the students Anele, Pleki, Nomza, Montombela, Zanele Mutsipe, Sise, Sasaki, and Tlabezo, Sandy Lazarus, my colleague, um, and Professor my friend Chimbombo and Professor Glenda Gray, who enthusiastically agreed to be part of this event. There are so many people who wanted to be here. And this was meant, as I said, to be a small gathering, but we're now close to 100 at the end of the day, and some of them uh, are from out of time. I wish to thank you all for your presence here. Our thanks also goes to my bosses for the money, bosses for the money, for the food, and for the space. It's always important to do this stuff. Uh, in particular, Professor Ashley van Niekerk, the Deputy Director of the Violence, Injury, Peace and Peace Research Unit, and the President of the, SA, of the Medical Research Council, Professor Gray. I have many reasons to be pleased, which I'm, going, I'm not going to tell you about. To have Nezi Swatiti persuaded Professor Mbombo to be here with us. Uh, but how she comes to be with us is all due, as I say, to the persuasive skills of Miss Titi. And I want to end by thanking, and can you please join me, thanking Miss Titi, my PhD student, who has done wonderfully in putting this event together. <laughs>